Matthew. Tony, hello. Nice to meet. Nice to meet. Nice to speak again. Yes, yes. Been a while. over the criticism of umpires in the AFL is heating up after revelations that one umpire appeared to be gloating at the defeat of St Kilda. Well, uh, Mike, just to put it into perspective, uh, the two umpires, Brett Allen and Matthew Head, walked on the plane, were on the uh, red eye coming back from Perth on Friday night. Their umpiring had been a little controversial and uh, in a smart aleck fashion, I'd uh, said something to the effect of Brett Allen of, jeez, uh, what about you blokes tonight? Uh, and with that, Matthew Head was the one who replied, now we know what it's like to have a victory. Now that's in context, of course, to the fact that the St Kilda Football Club and the umpire fraternity is at loggerheads at the moment over some comments made by Grant Thomas uh, last week. What it has done, of course, Mike, is to uh, put into question the whole integrity of the umpiring system uh, within the AFL. The AFL has called in former Assistant Police Commissioner Alan Roberts to head up the investigation of what was said on board last Friday's midnight flight from Perth to Melbourne. After taking a statement, the investigators moved on to Eddie Maguire, who dropped his own bombshell today. One twenty thousand and four. Okay, which twenty thousand dollars and four, which I, I obviously took as an inference to uh, it's cost him, uh, cost him being Grant Thomas twenty thousand dollars and the four points. An AFL inquiry has exonerated umpire Matthew Head of allegations that he made an inappropriate remark while boarding a plane in Perth after last weekend's St Kilda Fremantle match. The allegation that umpire Matthew Head stated. Now we know what it feels like to have a win is not substantiated. At no point did I have any conversation with Tony Jones. Well, Pete, uh, let's go through a couple of things and let's get a couple of things straight. First of all, I'm not a liar and I do not deviate one iota from the story of this week. How sensitive and difficult do you reckon it's been to report this story given the corporate relationship between Channel 9 and the AFL, a relationship we hope continues? But let me just say this. Aside from my family, I have two responsibilities in life. One is to my employer, the other one is to you, the viewer. And that responsibility is to bring you the uh, best and most accurate story I can, and I think I've been doing that for the past 20 years. Based on the current climate, the umpire story was legitimate. And I'll say again, I do not back away from my version of the story for one second. Umpire Matthew Head said it. 15 years, can you believe that? It, it is, yeah, it feels like yesterday to some extent because it's uh, something that uh, never goes away. When you say, uh, you know, it comes up all the time, to what extent? Look, I, it's, um, it's, it's either there's an article in the paper, something on Twitter, when St Kilda play Fremantle and they're trying to build up the game. Um, I always just find that there's, uh, yeah, there's always something that brings it up. Um, uh, your conversations with people... Uh, particularly, particularly St Kilda supporters yeah. as well. Um, yeah, it's just something that just never, never too far away from uh, for, from from coming up. As much as you know, like it's not uh, you know not something you know that I generally ever talk about um, for no reason other than it, it's people bringing it up to me. Um, so yeah, that's it, it, it. For some reason, it just keeps rearing its head. Yeah, I, I find the same thing, uh, particularly when Frio are hosting St Kilda over there. Uh, and I, I, I do get calls from radio stations like producers who want to you know, use it as part of the pre-match and uh, a number of people doing podcasts. And I, I haven't spoken about it and I won't talk about it up until now because uh, I sort of feel it's unfair on you. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm still doing the same as what I was doing back then. Um, yeah. But, you know, I wonder what impact it actually had on you. And that's, that's what's always made me a little hesitant to talk about it. Yeah, sure. And, and, I, and I appreciate that because... Um, one of my one of my concerns, and look, yeah, I have been approached, you know, a lot over the years. It's like, when, when will you say something? 
um, you know, by, by a lot of journalists. And I was always, look, I, I, you know, what's happened, happened. I don't hold any grudges. It's not something that, um, you know, uh, you know, it, it's it's it's. I mean, I'm not precious about it at all. It's just it's just something. It's just something that happened. And um, one of the other things is that uh, you know, like I'm not a I'm not in the media, right? And um, uh, you know, it's not it's not something I chase. Um, so it's you know, and I always felt um, you know that you know, and particularly and even even if I go back to the time, you know, I was I was part of the AFL and you were quite restricted in terms of, you know, your exposure and what you could say and what, and, and, and what you couldn't wear, when and where. But um, so there was that. And yeah, I just like, well, you know, it, it, it's what it's what's happened. And I've never really felt compelled to, um, you know, to, to talk about it, really. How, how much of a I'm really keen to find out the uh, the I don't know if mental strain is the right word, but it certainly was for me at the time because uh, you found out who your friends were. I certainly <laughs> found out who my friends were in the media. And there were a number that said, why, why would you run the story? But there were more that would sort of say, well, you're compelled to run the story because it brought into question the whole integrity of the umpiring department. So there yep. was that. And there was also the fact that, you know, I think Andrew Dimitri might have been calling for my blood, you know, with my boss mm. at the time. Uh, yep. the, you know, Derek Humphrey Smith was on radio every five minutes talking about legal action. And so yep. I, I found it a really stressful time, I've got to say, probably the most stressful week I've ever had in, in the time that I've been here. Yeah, yeah, I, I was I was certainly very very similar. I mean, I'd been very quiet um, up until that. Like as I said, like I wasn't you know I wasn't you know didn't have a profile at all in the media like like some do now. And uh, for me, it was um, so I was on the verge. I felt like I was on the verge of my first finals campaign um, going into that match, and um, and you know I was pretty much two games away from from potentially doing my first final so uh uh so there was that component um you know and obviously you know getting that game at that time it was a um you know it was a real step in the right direction so so there was that you know and then um for me i'm i'm also for you know umpires you know laying low unless you know unless there's a need to so i was really um uh sort of yeah worried about um yeah bringing umpires integrity into question um so that that was what i was most nervous about and um and because you know i'm not a seasoned professional um you know in the media um it was like well you know what are they going to you know what's the media not necessarily you um uh, but you know what is the media going to try and do to um you know to really make a make a story of this and, 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 and you know, yeah, and, and try and make something out of it. So that, that was my, so that was probably my, my three biggest sort of worries during that week were, um, yeah, it was, you know, what impact would it have on me? Um, uh, you know, the umpiring group and then also, um, yeah, just, just umpiring, you know, just, just the integrity of the game, which is something, you know, that, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, it was a worry for me. I mean, and take all that into account. So, as I said, I, I, I felt under a lot of mental stress at the time, particularly on the Thursday, just before yep. um, they came out on the Friday and you were there in that media conference with Demetrio and uh, yep. uh, Alan Roberts, I think it was. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I really felt as though I was sort of one out and I'd, I'd completely f***ed it up, mm. for want of a better term. Um, yep. did, you, did you feel that mental stress yourself? Yeah, yeah, so I certainly did. Yeah, because I was like, well, you know, this could be, this could be the, you know, this this could be the end. You know, like I, I had no idea how it was going to, um, you know, how how it was going to play out. You know, particularly mine was probably in those in those first three days, uh, where we got where I got investigated, um, and uh, you know, I think it was over a couple of days, and like you're sitting there waiting, like I, I, I've got no idea because all I did was go in and they asked me questions and I. And I answered and I knew they were talking to a few people. And I was like, you know, I wake up, um, you know, I, I had no idea how it was going to how it was going to unfold. So that was the worry for me was probably those first three days um, until, you know, the AFL sort of, you know, did, did their findings. So I'm interested that, um, like, I don't know whether this is the right analogy or not, but in um, say if you're uh, if you're a lawyer, um, you, gen- you can't be you know, a lawyer on in your own cases, you know, about yourself. If you're a police officer or, or, or a police officer, generally you can't investigate, you know, your own incidents. Um, 
as a journal, as a journalist, when you are involved in it, was there is there any? Um, how, how does that work? You know, yeah. if you're the if you're the person in it. Yeah, and and that that was awkward. So from memory, I did the story on the Monday night saying this is what he said, um, and yeah. it, it could have turned to shit from my point of view, had I not got a phone call on that Monday morning from a guy called Mitch Rantessis, I think his name was, uh, who was sitting an aisle away from me and a row in front. So he was the next aisle and a row in front, a St Kilda supporter who heard what I alleged you to have said. Uh, and mm-hmm. he rang and he said, listen, I just want to, you know, it looks like things are going bad for you. Uh, I just want you to know that uh, I actually heard, and I was so incensed by the comment, I wrote it on my boarding pass, and he still had his boarding pass. So, you know, had he not come forward, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation now. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, and, um, you know, and some of the other things I'm asked, um, you know, asked about, you know, around, uh, uh, you know, sort of around the incident and when when we're getting on the plane, um, so was it was it something from uh, given the build up? Was it something from Channel Nine to try and uh, try and make something of you know Grant Thomas's comments in the lead up, um, given the given the hysteria in the in the media during the week? Um, because because my view was that I, I wasn't supposed to be in that game, uh, so I was a, I was a late caller. So going into that game, I didn't have um, uh, uh, to this day I, I don't recall. Or like I, I knew, obviously, I'm aware of what was going on in footy, but I wasn't aware of. Uh, it just doesn't, you know, resonate with me. You know, um, sort of the, the incident leading into it. You know about Grant Thomas and his comments. Yeah. Um, and how are the umpires going to react? Was it something that, um, you know, as a as a broadcasting team that you were sort of looking for? And, and I'm just wondering how that worked. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, with, I mean, it's 15 years ago too. And, I, you know, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not privy to the production meetings of 15 years ago going into this game. But I know that the one thing that we sort of prided ourselves on with Friday Night Football was turning it into a, a news event as well. So, you know, whether it was Nathan Brown breaking his leg, whether it was Jason McCartney coming back, whether it was Danny Frawley being spat on by spectators, you know, we, we would create the news story. So obviously, given the furor that Grant had created earlier in the week by saying the umpires needed to leave their egos in the locker and that, and then the $20,000 fine, I'm pretty sure that Nine would have used that as the build-up to that Friday night game. Now, once the siren went... There was never any talk about let's keep this going, uh, and indeed, there would never have been an aftermath to it had you and I not crossed paths on the plane. Mm, okay, yeah, it's interesting because I, I watched the game back for the first time over the weekend, just just in preparation for, uh, uh, or not preparation, but just just because you know I knew we were going to have a chat today, and so because I, I hadn't watched the game at all. Um, uh, back whereas usually we do a review, so I watched it back for the first time and. Uh, First of all, unbelievable game, um, like just just electric um, the, the whole game. Yeah, there was a um, you know there was reference to um, you know umpiring throughout. Um, generally, when there was some contentious free kicks paid, um, so um, uh, so I, mean, I thought you know uh, it, if we go back in time, it's probably all perfectly fair and reasonable. I didn't think it was over the top, and then. Um, you know, during the game, um, and then yeah, I suppose afterwards, um, uh, you know, what what sort of worried me was like, um, you know, when when we're on the pl- you know, on the plane, and um, like when, when you saw us, were you were you looking to try and get a reaction out of us? No, no, it was. I, I'd say I'll tell you. No, it was. Well, well, it was not a setup. If that's what you're asking me, whether I was trying well, to. I thought it was a setup. But, but, I mean, you, you saw us, and uh, you know, obviously, like, like what you know, because I think you were calling us out. Um, so were you like looking to try and get a get a get a response from us? Not from a news point of view, no. So it was. Uh, it was. A, I think I described it as the time as a smart aleck remark to maybe Brett Allen. Would that be right? Was Brett Allen one of the yeah unpo- yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, and I said, what about you blokes tonight? And that's when you responded with the response that I reported. Um, so there was never... And, and, and I, I think you're going to ask me the question now, why did I report it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, 
so I had four hours to think about that on the flight on the way home. And the next day, I was still unsure. And it was only when I went to Cadinia Park, Geelong was playing West Coast the next day. And I went there and in the media box, I said to Mike Sheehan, I said, something funny happened on the plane um, just before we left Perth. And I told him the story and he said, what are you doing with it? And I said, I don't know. And he said, he said, you should run. He said, you're compelled to run that. He said, because it brings into question the integrity of the umpiring. Um, so then I had to wrestle with the fact, do you report what some might perceive as a private conversation? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then when you take into account that it, it's in the middle of an aircraft cabin with how many other people bearing witness to it, then mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's legitimate. Mm. Okay. Um, so, and you're talking about, um, you know, the stress, um, you know, that you had during the week. If you, if you had your time over again, what would you do? I'd do it again. Would you? But I'll tell you why though, Matthew, because um, it, it was still in, in the context of the week leading into that game where Grant Thomas had taken aim at the umpires and there were allegations of you guys walking into the St Kilda rooms and turning on your heels and walking straight back out again. And then the, the perceived, well, I'm not going to say perceived bias, but the questionable free kicks that some St Kilda supporters might have thought they were questionable, then mm-hmm. I, I think it was every bit the story. Now, the only thing that I'm regretful for is that it may have impacted your future as an umpire. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, look, I did, so after that, um, uh, I did, so that was 05, I umpired to 08. It was definitely a um, a downward, I wouldn't say downward spiral, but um, uh, so I, I didn't keep going forward after that point. So I'm not sure that that had anything to do with it. As I said, like once, once it was once it was done, um, done and sort of dusted, and the you know the dust settled on that, and the season ended. Um, yeah, like it, it it had no further bearing on 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 my career. Um, that that's for sure. Um, and I yeah I did another uh, yeah n- another three seasons after that before I decided to retire. So um, yeah, so so. Um, you know, at, at the time, you know, maybe, I mean, I, did, I didn't have a good night that night in terms of umpiring. As I said, I, I felt like I was on the verge of my first final series and uh, uh, I didn't have a good night. There were two, so I've had, I went back and had a look and there were 33, 33 free kicks paid on the night. 30 of them were sort of line ball um, and there were um, three that were free kicks that resulted in goals. And one of them, the killer, was the one right at the end uh, with about 10 minutes to go, where I paid it to Luke McFarlane. Um, and what I've gone back over that night, I mean, the, the, the lead-up to Grant Thomas, you know, the Grant Thomas comment had no bearing one iota. Um, I've paid decisions on the night which were, which, were, which were wrong. I think on the night I had a sort of a processing error in terms of two hands around the waist, pay a free kick, and they just, just weren't enough to, um, uh, to, to warrant free kick. So it was more just around the... Um, uh, you know my, my my performance on the night, which um, you know, which uh, which was you know, you know, b- below below the standard that I'd set leading up to it. So uh, you know, it's quite interesting that uh, you know I've I've broken bread with Tomo since. Um, uh, so we 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 made contact and uh, uh, yeah, broken the bread in you know in relation to it. Um, you know, he's he's got a different view, just like. You know, um, you know, like there, there's different views going around just in terms of, you know, the lead up to it. I mean, uh, you know, what I say is, you know, like the, the fact that we were supposed to be, um, uh, you know, if, um, in the rooms before the game ignored, um, you know, St Kilda, um, St Kilda players and coaches. The fact that, uh, that you know, we went around and um, we, we're told what time to go around to the room so we can go and meet the players and coaches. So you're told 45 minutes before the game you go and see St Kilda. And we went around there at that time, and there was there was no one there, you know. So I suppose for me, you know, it's just about all these things that um, you know that, that, that go on, which uh, you know, uh, you know, which sort of create a life of their own. Do, do you believe in sliding doors? Because it was interesting that you mentioned before that you weren't even supposed to be umpiring in that game. I mean, that is a real sliding doors moment, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, yeah, and that I, I do think about that. Um, I can't remember what game I was supposed to be in, but uh, yeah, I was a uh, I was a late call-up, um, 
uh, yeah, I think I got it like, you know, because usually when you're umpiring back at those time, you're getting, um, uh, you get your appointments two weeks before. And then I think it was, you know, on the, uh, on the Monday or Tuesday, I got the call up and, uh, yeah, so that's one sliding doors moment. Um, uh, you know, pay the free kick to, to Luke McFarlane. If you go back and have a look, Luke McFarlane's kicking them off his shin that night, missing from 10, 20 metres out. He's kicked the one from the boundary off his shin and it's floated through and, and gone for a goal, right, which, uh, you know, which got them, you know, really close to the line. And then obviously the, um, uh, you know, but that was where the free kick was paid. And then I wasn't even supposed to be on that flight. Um, so... Uh, typically, umpiring um, umpires would travel the next day. Um, the only reason I got on that flight was because um, I'd already organised to go and propose to my wife the next day, and um, and so I had to go back and get the pick up the ring before before lunchtime so I could propose that night. Um, otherwise, I would have been on like the uh, uh, you know the afternoon flight out of Perth. So there's probably three sliding doors moments there for me. Um, in terms of this whole this, this whole incident, <laughs> Matthew, you're killing me here. <laughs> uh, so, did you propose? I did. Yeah, we proposed that night. So, what um, what what I, I didn't think after that when I got off the well, on the plane, walked past you, um, didn't think anything of it until I was sitting on the couch the next night, waiting for my wife to um, uh, to get ready before I was going to go out and propose to her, and. Um, and then I was watching the Channel 9 News, and that's when, I don't know who it was, but um, somebody, whoever was on the news on the Saturday night, came out and said, uh, umpires are investigating, uh, sorry, the, the AFL are investigating umpires allegedly making comments. I'm like, that's not me. It couldn't be me. It must be one of the, must, must be one of the boundary umpires or something. So all that night, my phone's going off, and uh, uh, eventually, you know, I have a sneak look at the... Um, think look at the phone and people you know and I, I started getting really nervous when I found out what was happening and my wife actually thought I was nervous about <laughs> proposing to her but it was actually nervous about all the, all these all these news that was breaking at the time so jeez so yeah. so, so you, you mentioned then walking on the plane yep so there's one question I, I want to ask you mm -hmm. did you say it no no, my, my very clear recollection was that when I was getting on the plane, um, I was standing um, at the start of business class walking through and you get held up, right? Because people are putting, up, putting on their, um, uh, you know, putting their, their luggage in overhead lockers mm -hmm. and whoever it was sitting, um, so where I got stalled, um, I was having a general conversation with, with I think it might have been Gary and uh, whoever was calling the game. We're having we're having a discussion. Well, Eddie was there. Eddie Eddie was there. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, my, I, I can't remember exactly who it was. We're having a general conversation. You were further up the back, making um, sort of calling out to us. I was having a conversation with um, uh, whoever it was next to me to my left um, about the game and. Um, Brett Allen, it was either in front or behind me, I can't recall, um, said, you know, D don't, don't worry about Tony. And uh, I was just continuing on the conversation and, and walked through. Mm. So how, how, how are we so opposed to what was actually said? I don't know. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the million dollar question, I suppose. It's, um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, that'll be, that's something that no one will ever know. Well, why didn't you sue? Um, why didn't I sue? I didn't, didn't, not something that I, that I'd contemplated. Yeah. I only asked that because as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, Derek Humphrey Smith just continually suggesting, you know, that you've got every right to sue and thank you by the way for not doing it, but I was pretty confident. <laughs> um, yeah. so, I mean, that's an area that I didn't particularly want to get into in terms of what did you say? What did I think yeah. that you said? Um, but it is quite staggering, isn't it? That our, our recollections uh are just so different are just so different mm. yeah yeah i know it's uh yeah i suppose that'll be the uh yeah that'll be yeah that's just just yeah where, where it's at i suppose yeah all right well look i don't think there's any point in actually pursuing you said i said whatever whatever yep. because history will show that we have opposing um you know views as to what was actually sort of said but um anyway look uh 
Look, I'm glad we've had the opportunity to clear the air anyway. Yeah, so am I. So am I. As um, as uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I've I've cleared the air with, uh, or you know, broken bread with with Tomo. Um, I suppose you are the last uh, uh, the last part of um, sort of not closing the chapter because I think it will continue on as part of uh, part of footy for a long time. But um, you know, yeah, you, but you're, you know, I haven't spoken to you since. So um, yeah, no, that was always probably the last piece for me was just to uh, you know at at the right time is to um, you know is, is to is to make contact and you know depending on how, on how you were going to on, on how you're going to respond to it. Yeah, well, look, I'm, I'm glad that we have. Um, it's probably been, you know, 13, 14 years too late. Um, but, I, I, you know, in all honesty, of all the stories that I've done over the years, this is the one I come back to occasionally in my own mind because of what I said earlier about I hope it didn't impact you personally uh, or professionally, although I, I sort of suspect that it might have done professionally. Uh, and I'm just glad that we can actually have a, a, a reasonable conversation. Yeah, yeah. Look, as yeah, I'm I'm not precious about it. No grudges to uh, to anyone or anything about this or you know any any part of my umpiring career. So, for me, you know, I've you know m- you know moved on. I'm not part of footy anymore. So uh, yeah, it's just something. It's just 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 something that look, look at it as an experience that, that that happened. And if we did happen to bump into each other on a Qantas flight, what would we do? <laughs> <laughs> that would. Uh, if if we could have chosen the setting, I think uh, I think sitting in uh, sitting on a on a Qantas uh, flight would have been would would have been ideal. Yeah. All right. Okay. No worries at all. Matthew, uh, good to talk to you, mate. And uh, maybe down the track we can catch up for a coffee and do it without Skype and cameras and all that sort of stuff. Sounds good. Love to. All right. Good on you, mate. And uh, thanks again. No worries. You're welcome. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.